Well, good morning, everybody. It is good to see you this morning. I say see you because I see several that are popping up in the comments section already. So thank you for for being here this morning. Thank you for participating in our morning devotional. I hope that you had a good weekend. I hope that your week got off to a great start with worship yesterday. I hope that uh, if you are a mother, that you had a great Mother's Day. I hope that you're all doing well, that you're excited for another week. I know that... uh, Given our current situation, it's kind of difficult sometimes to get excited for another week, but um, I hope that you are. I hope that you have big plans this week to uh, do the Father's will, to walk in the good works that God has prepared for us to do, uh, to be an encouragement to each other. You're already off to a great start because you're encouraging me just by being here this morning. We are continuing through the Sermon on the Mount. In fact, we have just a couple more sections to go in the Sermon on the Mount. We're actually doing the Sermon on the Mount uh, on our Sunday morning uh, sermon series now. And so if you haven't been tuning in for our Sunday worship, we just started this yesterday uh, with uh, a new series talking specifically about the home and implementing the ways of the kingdom into our home. And so we're going to walk through the Sermon on the Mount on Sunday mornings, but we're also doing that uh, in our morning devotionals as well. And thinking about it specifically in terms of our current pandemic situation and thinking through what it looks like to be kingdom people in the midst of a global pandemic, I guess. Uh, But uh, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15 is where we are this morning. Jesus says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. I think again, Jesus is warning his disciples to beware of those uh, like the scribes and Pharisees who are uh, hypocrites and false teachers and false prophets who have this facade of righteousness and piety, but inwardly are, as he says, diseased and ravenous. Um, I also think about Paul's words. I'm going to change our scripture here. Think about Paul's words in Galatians chapter 5. And I think about what he's dealing with there in the churches in Galatia. And he is telling the followers of Jesus to walk by the Spirit. And then he also talks about those who walk by the flesh. He says, The works of the flesh are evident sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, you know, strife jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you as I warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And again, in in context, Paul really is warning the churches in Galatia about, just as Jesus is warning, false teachers, false prophets, those who are teaching things that are contrary to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he says these false teachers who live and walk according to the flesh, it's evident by their life. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, things like these. And then he contrasts that and says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So now if we go back to Matthew chapter 7, the the, uh, Sermon on the Mount, and you think about what Jesus is saying, he's saying you will recognize these false prophets not just by what they say or don't say, because sometimes it's hard to know, is this teacher teaching the will of God? Are they teaching truth? And he says, you will recognize them by their fruits. And what fruits are those? Well, again, same types of fruits that that Paul is describing. 
those who walk according to the flesh, the, the works of the flesh, Paul says, are evident. You'll be able to look and see. And, it, and if you're, they're walking by the Spirit, then again, you will see that good fruit, love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and so on. And, and, and it really, it's the same types of things Jesus is talking about all throughout the Sermon on the Mount. Whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. This is the type of lifestyle that true teachers of truth will be, will be living. This is what their lifestyle will look like. They will do to others what they would have done to them. They will be full of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. So look at, look at their life and look at how they're living. Those who are of the truth live as people of truth. And of course, there's, there's a couple of different applications we could, we could make of that, couldn't we? I mean, on the one hand, we need to be people of truth, not just people who speak the truth. You know, sometimes I think that, that we think that's all that matters as it pertains to religious matters. I mean, we're not, we're not, you and I are not prophets in the sense that God gave us a direct message and that we're conveying that to the world. But in a sense, we are, as those who would go into the world and make disciples, any one of us who open our mouth and proclaim Jesus is Lord. And we all do that, don't we? I hope that we're all confessing that truth, both internally amongst other disciples and also externally to our neighbors and to our friends and confessing this great truth, confessing these great oracles of God that have been recorded and passed down to us, we are sharing this truth. We are, in a sense, not prophesying in the sense that God gave it directly to us, but we are sharing these prophecies with others. And so it's not enough. It's not enough that we simply speak the things that are true. Our fruit is, has to match the truth of the prophecies that are coming out of our mouth. Our fruit needs to be examined. First, as Jesus was talking about the speck in the log, we need to examine our own fruit and say, is my life full of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control? Am I the kind of person that on the outside I look like a sheep, but on the inside, I'm a ravenous wolf. That, that's not the lifestyle that we need to be living, is it? But yet, I see Christians all of the time, and I've been guilty myself of speaking the truth of the gospel, yet doing so in a way that's hateful and rude and mean and unkind. It, is, is, that, is that the mark of a true prophet or preacher or teacher or follower of Jesus, we've got to stop and examine our own life. It's not enough that we speak the truth. We have to speak the truth in love. And love is patient. And love is kind. It doesn't envy. And it's not rude. And it's not, it doesn't boast. And it isn't self-seeking. This is what love looks like. And Jesus says, you will be able to tell. You'll be able to tell whether or not a person, including ourselves, is it is a sheep on the outside and inside is a wolf but again the the most the, the 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 clearest application of this is looking at other people looking at other teachers and our our world is is full it, not just in the religious world but in the religious world too of, of people that are taking advantage i mean we can see this can't we that there are people on television and, and, and people that are, are using religious message to line their own pockets, to become millionaires, to take advantage of the, the poor and the gullible and the, you know, the naive. And, and this is exactly the kind of thing that Jesus is talking about, is these kinds of, of people, but also those types of people who are preaching true things, not, not just the, the con artists that want you to think that they can heal people and they really can't, and they're just taking advantage of gullible people, but also, but also the preachers that are preaching true things. A lot of times the Pharisees and the scribes, what they were saying was true. 
but they were wolves. And brothers and sisters, I, I see that, and you've seen that. Preachers and teachers who, what they're saying is true, but they're wolves. And, and there comes a time where we have to not only call that out on ourselves and say, look, I'm being a hypocrite and I need to change my life. I, I need to change the fact that I may be speaking truth, but I'm not living truth. But there also comes a time where we have to say that is vicious behavior and, and that does not reflect the gospel of Jesus Christ. What does it look like to be a true teacher of truth? Not just speak truth, but live out the truth. Live out good fruits, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These things have to be emphasized. And there have been times in the last 50, 60 years, whatever the case may be, where we've emphasized speaking the truth, but not necessarily what Jesus is saying here, the fruit of a spirit-filled life. And so, again, there, there's a couple of different applications, but I think first and foremost, we have to look at our own, our own life. We have to look in the mirror and just stop and say, am I producing good fruit? And if the answer is no, if the answer is, you know, I haven't been patient, I haven't been filled with love and joy and peace, then we have to pray, and this is something we've talked about all throughout our morning devotionals, we have to be, we have to be intentional about being filled with the Spirit, Ephesians chapter 5. We have to allow ourselves to be filled with the Spirit so that our life does produce these good fruits. We have to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. And so sometimes when we notice that our life is not filled with the good fruit with which it should be filled, we have to stop. We have to slow down. We have to take a deep breath and we have to allow the spirit of God to work in us. Before we open our mouth, before we share truth, before we correct somebody's behavior, before we say, don't do this or do this or stop doing this other thing, we, we have to stop and make sure that our life is filled with good fruits. But we also have to make sure that we're not listening to those who are ravenous wolves, who are taking advantage of and hurting and dividing and, and being cruel and that on the outside, they, they look like they, they're teaching the truth, but inside they're diseased, as Jesus said. We, we have to be willing to look at people's fruit. Look at their, the life that they're producing. And Jesus says, that's who a false teacher is. Do you know that, I mean, there's times where somebody might believe something that's false. It might even teach something that's false. Apollos in the book of Acts, he's a great example of somebody who was teaching something that was false as it, as it pertained to baptism. And Priscilla and Aquila, they didn't treat him like a false teacher, like a false prophet, because he wasn't a ravenous wolf. He was simply mistaken. And they took him aside and they taught him the way of the Lord more accurately. They said, hey, you know, actually, this isn't quite the, the truth. You're teaching the baptism of John and you need to be teaching the baptism of Jesus. And so they just explained it to him because he wasn't a false prophet. He was teaching something that wasn't quite true, but he wasn't a false prophet. Whether or not somebody's a false prophet isn't just about whether or not they're saying things that are true. It's about whether or not their life is accord in accordance with truth whether or not they're walking by the Spirit, whether or not their, their life is full of good things, or whether or not they're being a hypocrite and they're trying to fool people and take advantage of people. That's the kind of people that Jesus says are truly false prophets. And those are the types of people on which, by which we have to be on guard. And we have to guard ourselves against that type of, of behavior, not just whether or not they're speaking the truth, but whether or not their, their life is full of good fruit. But we also have to look at ourselves and ask ourselves, is my life, is your life full of good fruit? Let's be people today and every day that are light and salt in the world, people that are producing by the power and the work of the Spirit, good fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Let's be 
those kinds of people. Thank you again for being here this morning. If there's anything for which we can pray for you, please put that in the comments section. If there's anything with which, with which we can help you, please let us know. We'd love to help you, but let's spend a, a couple minutes in prayer. Father, we are incredibly thankful for another day. Father, help us to be on guard against false prophets, false teachers who are ravenous wolves who are not only teaching false things, but whose life is full of of evil and wickedness. And Father, we pray that you help us not to be false prophets and false teachers. Help us, Father, not only to speak truth, but to live out the truth, to live and to walk by the Spirit, to have lives that are full of good fruit. Help us, Father, to examine our own fruit of our life and also to be willing to examine the fruit of those who would teach and lead. Help us, Father, to be honest and to be on guard against those who are wolves. Father, we thank you for Jesus, the good shepherd, and we thank you, Father, that we can listen to him and trust him and follow him and walk in his ways. Father, may we do to others what we would have them do to us. May we turn the other cheek. May we go the extra mile. May we seek to be salt and light in this world. Give us this day an opportunity to serve and to bless and to encourage. Help us to make the most of every opportunity that we have. Father, we pray for those that are sick, pray for those that are grieving, pray for those that are struggling, we pray for those that are separated from their loved ones. We pray, Father, that you give us energy and strength today to do your will. We thank you, Father, for this time we could spend together. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all. I love you. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for being here this morning. Take care. Bye-bye.